go away, we have some pre-recorded poster pitches next, I think. Is that true? Hello everyone, I am Munmun Bhaseen from Molecular Biophysics Unit, Indian Institute of Science. I would be presenting the poster titled Structure and Stability Predictions from Saturation Mutagenesis. Mutagenesis is a tool to learn about proteins, identifying functionally significant protein positions and understanding determinants of protein folding and stability. In this work, we have analyzed the deep mutational data to understand the patterns of mutational sensitivity and substitution preferences at buried and exposed positions. This was used to predict the function determining, that is active site, and buried residues solely from mutational data. We validated this by coupling deep mutational scanning and facts to generate mutational landscape of expression and binding of a mutant library. We also used this method to delineate secondary structural features and identify binding site residues of an intrinsically disordered protein segment. I am looking forward to discuss this work during the poster session. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Matt Coelho. I'm a postdoc at the Wellcome Sang Institute in Cambridge in Matthew Garnett's lab. And uh, my poster is on base editing and using base editing to map mutations in the interferon gamma pathway in cancer. So if you're interested in base editing technology or cancer immunotherapy, then please come and visit my poster. Thanks very much. Variant effect maps promise to stem the ever-growing tide of variants of uncertain significance by providing experimental evidence. These maps excel at quantifying the impact of variants on the molecular function of a protein, but the relationship between VE map scores and health outcomes is generally not linear. A relatively small decrease in protein function may already be sufficient to cause disease. Under current ACMG rules, the same weight is typically applied to all variants found damaging in a given assay, and they are included or excluded based on just simple thresholds. We propose a more data-driven and nuanced Bayesian approach that calculates the appropriate evidence weight for each variant within a VE map. In a two-step approach, we first find functions translating VE map scores into a log likelihood ratio, or LLR, of pathogenicity. In the second step, LLRs can then be expressed in terms of the ACMG's categorical evidence codes. Hi everyone. We're studying mutations and uh, post-transitional modifications in disorder regions of proteins, namely in uh, short leader motifs. Um, in this poster, I'll present uh, how we use computational and experimental methods uh, to look at uh, uh, short linear motifs in autophagy uh, receptors. Um, so if you're interested in disorder proteins, uh, uh, post-translational modifications, uh, and larger fields of uh, autophagy and cancer, I would be happy to meet you in my poster. Uh, my name is Juan Antonescu. I'm a postdoc in Elena Papaleo's lab at the Danish Cancer Society in Denmark. Um, cheers from Copenhagen. Hi, my name is Matthew Berg, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the Vienne lab at the University of Washington. Recently, our lab established Miro a high-throughput approach to interrogate the functional consequence of protein variation across the proteome. By misincorporating non-canonical amino acids into proteins during translation, we can create thousands of protein variants at the proteome level, which we can then couple with biochemical selections and mass spectrometry to determine the functional impact of variation. Currently, we are limited to misincorporating a small set of non-canonical amino acids that are recognized by native amino acyl tRNA synthetases in cells. Our goal here was to engineer tRNA mutants that misincorporate alanine at non-alanine codons to generate a wider range of protein variants. We were able to do this by mutating the anticodon of alanine tRNAs, and using mass spectrometry, we identified thousands of peptide variants. To hear more about this work, come check out my poster. I am performing a deep mutational scan of the serpent C1 gene, which encodes the natural anticoagulant antithrombin. Patients with serpent C1 mutations have both qualitative and quantitative antithrombin deficiencies, leading to an increased risk of venous thromboembolism. I am assessing the effects of serpent C1 mutations on antithrombin secretion and function by fusing antithrombin variants with EGFP and a transmembrane protein, respectively. To date, our lab has introduced EGFP-tagged antithrombin into a landing pad cell line and demonstrated secretion and retained inhibition against thrombin. 
We have also demonstrated retained thrombin inhibition when antithrombin is displayed on the surface of landing pad cells. Hi, my name is Michael Chambers. I'm a graduate student at Georgetown University, and this is my poster pitch. Um, I'm going to be sharing a project that's focusing on an evolutionary arms race between a component of our innate immune systems and a pox virus antagonist. Um, some of the interesting things I think about this project are is that both of these proteins are evolving quite rapidly, which is pretty unusual for humans. Um, so the aim of this project is to prospectively identify uh, missense variants that are available to both of these proteins and categorize them as variants of opportunities or potentially variants of evolutionary constraint. Um, and another thing that I think is kind of fun and interesting about this project is the methods that we're using to generate these missense variants and to combine them um, because in order to pull this project off, we have to generate and track or characterize hundreds of thousands of unique protein-protein uh, pairs. So um, yeah, with that, I'll be presenting on June 16th and I hope you'll take some time and just stop by. Cheers.